Hi weaving friends, I'm so glad that you can join me for this what I think is going to be a fantastic project. Let me give you a little bit of background as to why I'm doing this and how I came about designing this project. Last year when the pandemic hit, I released the Wash Your Hands Towels project, which was a really popular project. And I know that all of you appreciated so much having something concrete, beautiful and creative to be able to fix your minds on in a time where there was such uncertainty. I loved doing that project so much for you that I wanted to do something similar this year. And something that has really been on my heart and in my mind for most of this year in particular is that I know there are so many people out there that as a result of everything that's been happening in the world are chronically lonely. So I wanted to create a project whereby you as the weaver would be weaving this beautiful scarf called the heart scarf. And you'd be weaving it with someone in particular in mind, someone that you know is struggling with loneliness. Perhaps they're not able to get out and see their family and friends like they normally would. Or you might know someone who's struggling, feeling down. Perhaps they live alone or they have some other difficulties that cause them to feel that loneliness. Really, that's one of the most heartbreaking things for me to think of is that there are people out there who are just desperately lonely. And if we, as the makers of beautiful things, can do anything to make someone's day a little bit brighter, then that's definitely something that I want to be a part of. And I know that many of you would want to as well. I'm going to read you the little poem that I wrote. Now, I'm no master poetry writer, but I wrote this little poem from my heart. Once again, we're coming back to the heart theme. And I'm going to have this as a printable on my blog alongside with the pattern for this scarf so that you have all the information that you need. And you can go there and download it and print it out. And once you've finished your scarf, you can package it up with the poem if you so choose or perhaps with something that you want to write yourself and send it off to the recipient. So here is the poem that you can include with your scarf as a gift if you want to. I wove this scarf with you in mind. I thought you'd like to know that you are loved and wanted and missed and never ever alone. Although I can't be there with you, I dearly love to be. So I wove my heart into this piece, especially for you from me. I guess the point here is uh, just to do something to brighten somebody else's day. I want to say as well, perhaps you're feeling really lonely yourself. Perhaps it's been an awful year for you. Perhaps you're having a hard time for other reasons. If that's the case, I would love for you to weave this scarf for yourself. And you can consider the words of the poem from me to you. Okay, so if you're ready, hop over to my blog and either just download and read from your screen or print out the instructions. I'll have all the materials list there for you. I will be using some affiliate links. That just helps me out a little bit, whereby if you purchase the yarn that I link to, then I get a very small commission in return at no extra cost to you. I really hope that you enjoy making this project and I hope that it does make a difference to somebody in your life. The first thing I want to do here is show you my loom setup. So this is my, the back of my loom is facing you and I've got my pegs over clamped to my table here. Yes, this is going to be a long scarf. The idea is for it to be an extra long scarf and a little bit wide as well. So um, I've got the two pegs just because of my distance to the loom. I figured it would be easier to keep the tension going pretty well if I've got two pegs. So I'm going to warp half of the loom and then I'll swap to the peg on the other side. You'll see that as we go. Another thing I've done here is I've tied off my slots. So I've got 42 slots total. And so I've counted them out and I've just marked them with some waste yarn so that I don't have to recount them again. I've got my ball of yarn. Now, if you're not sure of the materials, don't forget to pop over to the blog and I'll have the link down below and you will be able to download the entire pattern and see all of the requirements. What I want to do is I want to be able to find the center if possible. 
simply because I like the colors radiating out from the in, inside more than I like the colors going in the opposite direction. So I could just take off this label and very easily find the end of the ball on the outside but I really want to have these colors going outward. I'm going to try to find the center of the ball. It might get messy. <laughs> we'll see. If it gets messy, um, I can always fix it. I can rewind it. I can do whatever. It does look like a bit of a mess here in the middle. I'm just looking for any kind of lead here where I can find a middle section. Still not finding it. Hmm. I did look on the, the Lion Brand website and they did say that they do have center pull balls and that you just need to tease it out and find the center. Well, I'm teasing and I'm not finding. I can't see a cut end there at all. All right, well, I've done something a bit messy there. What I'm gonna do at this stage is I'm going to rewind the ball in the opposite direction because I do have a ball winder. If you don't have a ball winder, you might not wanna risk pulling this out in the first place. But that's going to allow me to realign the colors. Again, I could still just grab this end and go from this end. But uh, I guess I've really got my heart set on doing it from this end first now. So I'm going to wind that and see how it turns out. Ran into another issue while I was winding. My ball winder wasn't big enough to fit the entire ball. So I, this is the first part of the ball, which is just what I wanted. I could start going from the outside colors to the inside, except some of those colors are over here on this ball. And the colors aren't going to match up because I've got the yellow on the inside. I want that continuation. So <laughs> what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to rewind this ball onto here so that its colors are backwards, if that makes sense. Now I've got something a little bit more like I wanted. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with this ball in the center. So it's gonna begin with the purple and that will graduate out to this orangey yellow. When I reach the end of that ball, then I'm gonna grab the outside of this ball so that those colors are going to be continuous. So if you imagine these two tied together, this one first and then this one, but I've got to start in the center with this one in order to radiate out to the orange. If I start in the orange, I'll be going in the opposite direction and ending with the purple, which won't match up with this one. Friends, what I recommend you do is don't be like Kelly and be so fussy about your color arrangements. 
just take the outside of the ball and do it that way. It is so much more simple. And I hope I haven't confused you by what I've done here. Got my first ball. I'm going to start in the center. If you're doing it that way, if not, just grab the outside of your ball. And I'm just going to put that underneath where I want to start threading it through. Tie on. And I'm ready to start warping. We're just doing the slots at this point. So I'm going to my right hand peg. Coming back round. If you have an annoying metal threading hook, I do recommend these. This is an Ashford double-ended hook. So one hook is for doing the reed or the slots and the other end is a much finer and that's for threading the holes. These are brilliant. They're made of plastic. They're a little bit flexible, which is really great. Makes it easy to thread both the slots and the holes. Really recommend these. I did have a metal hook initially and it was just so frustrating. It split the yarn all the time and I gave up on it. So when I found these, I was very happy. Now we're starting to get a change in the color progression. See, warping with these kind of yarns is really fun because it changes as you go and it's really interesting to see what happens. You're not going to be using your full ball of yarn. Our scarf isn't quite that big. So you won't get to see all of the colors, but then you'll have some left over for another project, which is always nice. So I'm going from the purple into the pink now. I like the way this yarn has a slight sparkle to it. That adds something a bit special too. Going right into pink now. I already have someone in mind to be the recipient of this scarf. So I'm thinking of that person as I start on this project. I think sometimes just a simple gesture towards someone, whether they're a stranger, whether they're someone who's closer to you, simple gesture of love, just to say you're important to me. I'm thinking about you. I think that can make all the difference. All right, we're still on pink, but slowly changing. Uh, I'm almost at the halfway mark, not quite. This slot here will be the halfway mark. So after this slot, I'm going to change to the second peg. And I'm also going to change camera angles. So when I go around the apron rod this time, I'm going to go to the opposite peg. And just start using that peg now in place of the other one. 
I'm also going to go around any ties that are in my way on the apron rod. That's very simple. Now I've just noticed something interesting. There is a tie in this piece of yarn right here. So I've got to decide, this is interesting, live on camera for you. Actually, it's really good when something like this happens because then I have to figure out what I'm going to do and I can help you to figure it out if the same thing happens to you. I wasn't actually expecting any breaks in this yarn because usually when you buy a yarn cake or a big ball, you don't really expect there to be any breaks or joins, but there can be. So, all right, I'm going to take this back a little way. I've only done a couple on here, so I'm gonna actually reverse by just taking off the last few threads to start with. Okay, just drop that down. I'll come back to my ball and I'm just gonna take that back. And I need to take the next one back as well. And then the break is in the, the following one. Take that off. I'm just pulling this back into a little pile on the floor. Because I'm using a center pull ball, um, I'm not gonna wind back onto the ball, this yarn. I'm just hoping that it's not gonna tangle on the floor. I actually sort of tested this yarn before and found that it's really good for not tangling. So that is a big bonus. All right, there's that little join right there. So that was in my, let's see, my middle slot. Yep. So I'm going to take that back, just like the others, pull it back um, until I can see the join back here. There it is. So I'll keep pulling back the yarn, but I'll just hold on to the join. Okay, so here's all the yarn that I wound back. And here's the break that I was talking about. So it's just where they've obviously broken the yarn or whatever, joined on a new piece of yarn. So I'm gonna take that, well, I'm gonna cut that first. And then this is my, the end of that piece. So I'm just gonna keep that there handy for a moment. So the break is here and my yarn ended here. So I'll just tension that up again to how it was. And I'll cut that piece and just tie that off. Now I do have this length here I can't do much with that actually because it's not long enough to, to do very much with. And it's not going to upset the color too much because actually where they put the join, the color change was fairly abrupt at that join. Um, it wasn't leading so much from this orange or red into the orangey yellow. If I put those side by side, um, you can see that's fairly abrupt color change but that's how it was in the ball so I'm just going to continue. Uh, I'm going to tie on that piece now that I've eliminated the knot because we can't have knots in the middle of our work. I mean I have done that before I've left a knot if I thought it wasn't going to be too visible but with a thicker yarn like this it's visible so I'd rather cut it out and you know wind things back and start again that way. So back to the warping.